coach welcome back to our channel in today's video we're going to be interviewing helen Steele. helen is the founder of streamline consulting a consultancy based in the united kingdom helen has been running streamline since 2015 and she mainly works with startup businesses but businesses in general and her main job is to help businesses to find available grants and loans that they can apply for to, to grow and scale to the next level. This interview is very valuable. Uh, Helen's got a lot of experience working in the grants and loans uh, sector. So make sure you watch it. And if you want to get in contact with Helen, her link is below this video. You can contact her directly. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the latest content. Yeah, so I'm affectionately termed the grants lady. That's what people call me. Um, and that's uh, the speciality of my business is to help um, my clients apply for grants. So I source the grants for them. And I find the best fit for grants because you get grants in all shapes and sizes and each grant has different scope, different eligibility criteria. Mm. So I know my clients, I know what the businesses are and I make sure that I present grants to them that are the best fit you know, for their businesses. So I help them find the grants and then I help them with the application process, which can be quite onerous. <laughs> Some of these yeah. grants are really chunky. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at the Innovate UK ones or some of the big European ones, they are a lot of work. I say that even some of the small ones are a lot of work. <laughs> they all seem to yeah. be a lot of work. So I help them navigate the process, go through everything, and then, you know, make sure we submit the application together. Nice. When Sorry. you work with sports coaches, um, what essentially do you help them with? So with the sports coaches, there aren't very many grants available for them, I'm afraid, at the moment. We always search and see what's out there. You know, sometimes there are a few uh, regional and county grants that pop up. But in the past, when I've worked with sports coaches, it's been through the startup loan scheme, which is another part of the business of my business that I that I deliver. Mm -hmm. I've been working with the startup loans for Oh, since 2018, so for quite a quite a few years now, and and the scheme is it's a it's a brilliant scheme. You know, when well, I've been working with them, the interest rate was six percent. You know, when interest rates went down, it was six percent. When they went up, it was six percent, and it's still six percent. <laughs> so it's still six percent interest rate, and it's a great it's a great scheme. You know, for for those businesses that are starting out and just want a little bit of cash just to get them going. And I find it's really good, you know, for sports coaches, particularly when they're setting up their business. Yes, it's a loan. You know, we'd all prefer to have a grant, wouldn't we? But if there aren't grants available, it's nice to go after some form of affordable funding. Mm -hmm. And if the uh, the sports coach has got a good um, good financial record and a good credit score and knows and, and a solid, you know, business proposition, uh, then you know, that that grant that money is, is certainly achievable for them. The maximum mm -hmm. they can get is twenty five thousand, and the, the beauty of it is that you can you can use it to build up your business. So, for example, if you're a sports coach and you want to have your own studio, for example, then you can use the 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 uh, startup loan money to pay for the deposit and the first three months rental. You can pay for it to be painted and kitted out as you wish. You know, you may want to have you know proper you know um a, a absorbable flooring. You know, so that you you're <laughs> Your plants can bounce up and down and then you yeah. survive and all the rest of it. Um, and then, of course, there's all the equipment, which costs a fortune. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, kettlebells, if you're doing kettlebells, I know how expensive those are. Mm -hmm. You know, they're really expensive to get a whole suite. And then you have your multifunctional training machines, don't you? Yeah. Which, you know, cost quite a few thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. So you can use uh, the funding, you know, for, you know, for all of that, you know, to, to stock and equip your, your studio. Okay, fantastic. So... When, when, for example, when you work with coaches, what's the, what's the requirement they need to have in order to get your help? So they really need to have an idea, a very, very good idea of what their business is. Now, I say a good idea. We, we've, we've helped quite a few coaches. So we, we know the business models. So we'll be able to advise and, um, and guide you, shall we say, because we'll say, oh, we had a client who did such and such. And would that work for you? So we'll be able to give you, you know, the, the basis of, of, of other models we've worked with. But we need them to be to be well thought out. You know, who is their target market? You know, 
you know, which demographic you know are they are they aiming to please are they going to be concentrating on maybe over 50s for example you know are they going to want to work with you know your your generation z's you know your generation for example you know, the, the younger generation so i need mm. we need to know sort of what, what demographic they want to concentrate on and who they want to attract because that does affect you know the type funnily enough the type of equipment you know that they will want within yeah. their facility and also the type of premises, the location, what sort of marketing they'll be doing. So even though we're not marketeers ourselves, you know, we have networks with marketeers. So, you know, depending on which demographic you are, you know, they are targeting, then that will affect, you know, how they want to reach, you know, those end users who they are attracting to their business. Okay. But just, yeah, as, right. which is a really good idea of what they want to do. I mean, even if they say, you know, I thought about this. But I also thought about that. But I've also thought about that. Um, I'm very happy, you know, to, to brainstorm with them and come up, which is the, is the best solution. I love a brainstorming session. Mm -hmm. You know, always up for throwing ideas around. But they do need to have a good idea, you know, of, of where their their passion lies and, you know, what they want to to end up doing ultimately. Because as we all know, life is too short not yeah. to do something we really enjoy. I agree. Yeah, that's great. And, and also, I know you mentioned as well, Helen, that, you know, at the moment, there isn't much, you know, grants going out for, for sports coaches, but it's not to say that there never will be, right? And it's right, about right. knowing, it's about mm -hmm. knowing, okay, when will the new kind of um, grants will come out and things like that, which obviously is a great time to, you know, speak to, to yourself. Um, and they can then have an idea of, you know, because, yeah, it, it, sometimes grants is not available for a certain industry. But it's when to know when, when new grants will come out. And I know, we, you know, we spoke earlier about you know when do grants come out and um and it could potentially be opportunity for for new businesses and established businesses as well and that's absolutely right andrew absolutely because at the moment there's lots of there are quite a large number of grants for creative industries you know and i've spoken to creatives in the past that have said oh there's never anything out there for me you know mm -hmm. there's never anything available for me but you know, this this last six months and this continuing year lots of availability and it will be exactly the same you know for your, your sports and your coaching industries you know it's sort of it's sort of you know it's a sort of cyclical cycle you know <laughs> when it's their turn there'll be so much to choose from <laughs> that you won't know which ones that you want to go after but there and as i say snapshot you know a grant is a snapshot in time so at the moment there might not be anything that, that's appropriate but who knows you know next week next month you know, something will come out and these grant competitions open and close. Some stay open for three weeks, some stay open for three months. So, you know, it's all about, you know, as you said, being on top, you know, of, of the new grant comp competition releases mm -hmm. and then being able to get that insight and that that knowledge through, you know, to, to potential clients. Amazing. Fantastic. So with the with the grants, um, is that do they come out in a certain time of the year or are they available all year round? How how would a, a coach watching this be thinking, right, when can I apply for them? They come out all year round. So all year, all year round. I mean, uh, to be the, the government back grants, which of course many of them are, those do tend to follow the tax year cycle. So you'll probably find it in a few sort of lessening, a lesser, a lesser amount as we get towards the end of that tax year. So that's your January, February, March period, you know, of each year. And then you'll see, you know, quite a few more come on when we, when we hit April. Oh, pr pretty similar to your your cycle, Andrew, as an, as an accountant. So there we go. <laughs> so we'll find more coming out in, yeah, in the April timeframe. But um, what I found quite interesting is that um, the grant writing periods or the where they allow you the, the time to write the, the grant is over holiday periods. So we've had some big grants where the, most of the writing is done over the Christmas period and the submission date's been sort of the 17th of January. And we've got some big grants at the moment where the writing period was all over Easter mm -hmm. and the submission period is, you know, the third week of April. So, um, yeah, it, it seems to sort of... <laughs> follow follow that flow i presume it's so that um the applicants do all the work over the holidays and the assessors can mark you know when it's not holiday period so that's probably the way the way that that works but yes they come out all all through the year and i would say anyone who's watching you know, the podcast just just hop onto google every now and again 
you know, or if you have access to a grant finding tool, many there are many grant finding tools which are free online. I just caution you with, with some of the information you put in there, because if you put in your industry and geography, you might come up with nothing at all, but play around with the industries. You know, so so put in different industry selections or different geography selections and just see, you know, what's available because you could be on there one evening and there'll be nothing. And as I said, two days later, you'll find something. So, um, yeah, just just hop on every now and again and, and see if you can find something that's available. Okay. That's what we do. We trawl on a regular basis. We we don't use AI. You know, we use humans and we go in there We put in lots of search criteria and we update our, our sort of master spreadsheet with all the opportunities and we just go in there regularly i mean today for instance we found one on ai that, that, that had come up just just been released so so yes again you know just got to get that discipline they're just going in and having a regular look mm -hmm. okay so what's what's a good website to use if you want to stay up to date with all all these grants um, I don't think there's anyone that's particularly great, I have to say. Sorry, okay. to be honest. I just think if you, I, I always find, well, it depends who likes ChatGBT. I know there are only fans of ChatGBT out there, <laughs> but you can you can put into ChatGBT, you know, uh, find me a grant, you know, in my industry um, of this of this size, of this value, and it will come back. It'll do one of the scrapes for you, so you can use that means. We just use we just use Google, so we use a Google scraping yeah. tool. Um, it's a it's a free tool that one of my um as a, as a one of my colleagues um has developed, and it uh, as I said it just scrapes Google for you know the, the current competitions that are around at that particular time that you're searching. So I would I would just you know simply just use Google. I would go in there and I would put in your requirements. You know do your your long chain searches within Google, mm -hmm. and just uh, that's that's the best that's the best means we found. Because some of the tools out there just just bring back rubbish, or they bring back, you know, yes, you could apply for the Horizon EU grant scheme, you know, for a 25 k loan, which is just nonsense. I mean, no one would want to apply to one of those massive schemes for for a tiny amount of grant funding. I mean, they they are for huge multi million opportunities. So, yeah, we we think just you know the long long chain questions, you know, inside the Google search works best for us. Okay, love that, love that, and. What what would you say for for any you know sports coaches, new businesses, or, or even established businesses as well? What would you say would be the difference in the kind of application process and the kind of how to make the application more successful from a, a applying for a grant versus you know a loan through through loan funding? Yeah, so with the loan funding, if I can, can I break that into into three? Because you've got the startup loans, and then you've got what I call traditional loans, where a business has been trading for more than two years, and then you and then you've got the grants. So with a startup loan, you can get that right from the beginning of your of your journey, so you don't have to have any trading history. So a business applying for a startup loan, uh, the applicant, I'll call them the applicant, needs to have a, a fair to good credit score because there's no company history you know, for you to pass the first financial gate of the application. Mm. So in order for the uh, the lenders to appreciate that you are you are a good lending, um, uh, you're not a lending risk, you know, you are a, a viable applicant to proceed through the process, they will look at your own personal credit score, you know, and see how you've managed your own personal credit, you know, to make that evaluation. And then you have to, your bank statements have to be in nice order. So, you know, no direct return, direct debits, no gambling, all those sorts of things. Even Bitcoin is, you know, classed as gambling. So none of that either. Oh, so wow. good. I didn't know that. Good, good, good bank statements. Um, so bank statements are, are clean and in an orderly fashion. And then of course a comprehensive uh, you know, business model. So it needs to be a good business plan. And all the all the, the the coaches, the sports coaches I've worked with have had good, good business opportunities. So we've always been able to craft you know, a, a very robust and a very good business plan and financial forecast for them. So they, they, you know, they are viewed as, as very as, as good commercial models moving forward from a loan perspective. So that's a startup loan. Then when you get to the traditional business lending, if you went to your bank or you went to an, you know, an alternative broker, um, then you need to have trading figures. So they ask for the last two years of you know, your annual financial statements so your your statements to see your trading figures and they look at your turnover and your profitability and then the amount that you would be lent would be based on your profitability so as a rough guide it's sort of a, roughly about you know twice 
you know, the profitability uh, that you have achieved in the last two years on average as a rough guide. But I said that's very rough because they take into all other you know, situations into account. You know, that wouldn't be fair in, our, in the COVID time for them to have relied on, you know, previous trading figures because, you know, many businesses, you know, in the, in the sport and health sector weren't able to trade, were they? So, you know, you can't rely on those statistics completely. And then they also look at your last month, your last six months bank statements as well for um, a traditional business loan. So it's the last two years of trading those figures and your last six months of bank statements. And then the amount of the amount of lending will be will be based, you know, on that uh, business trading history that you have. Then with a the grant, we're looking at different things entirely. So again, normally grants you're looking for, you know, is the business um what, what's unique? You know, what's the business delivering in the marketplace that's unique? You know, they talk about innovation, they talk about disruption. So for example, you know, if a if a sports coach was using AI to be, you know, disruptive, for example, you know, within the industry, then that would be something that would be very grant worthy. And then there are a number of um you've got to look at um value for money, especially when it comes to a grant, because depending on which authority is issuing the grant is normally coming you know, from the public purse. So it's taxpayers money. So you have to justify why you think that, you know, your business should be supported. Why is it a good use of public funding? So that's there'll be some pull through. So, yes, you'll be awarded a grant of, say, 30,000 for argument's sake. And it's to deliver, you know, a certain new capability you know, into your sports, into your, your coaching practice. Um, and what is the pull through? You know, what was what the value to the greater community? So you have to make sure that you have that within a grant competition. There are other things as well for scope and eligibility that you need to tick off. I always call it buzzword bingo because you need to look at what they're asking specifically and make sure that you answer those questions. And each grant and competition is different. But in essence, it is about, you know, the, um, you know, the, the value of your business and is it a good use of um public spend for for a grant application mm, that's that's really great insight um knowledge there so now a, qu a question is obviously with grants it's it's free money isn't it but with a loan yeah, it's free money uh, i remember reading a book there's no such thing as a free lunch you know i'm wondering if there's no such thing as free money <laughs> but yes yeah. it, it is it is but you do need to put it yeah to you need to spend it on what you say you're going to spend it on, basically. <laughs> Correct. So, well, essentially, yeah. you, you don't have to pay it back, right? No, you do not have to pay right. it back. No. Okay. No. So, with a loan, obviously, it's a little bit different because you're you're paying it back. So yes, you're paying it back. <laughs> when when um, when coaches want to apply for loans, what's what's a few things that, in terms of risks, that you would maybe talk to them about or or you can give them a bit of advice before taking out a loan? Yeah, so I definitely want to make sure that the loan is affordable to them. So, you know, we we look at um, their own personal income and expenditures. It's nothing to do with the business. It's just their household expenses that they as an individual, you know, have to have to spend on each month. Mm -hmm. So whether it be mortgages, you know, utility payments, you know, your, your water bills, insurances, you know, running the car, you know, children, whether they have, have school fees or, you know, how much, you know, how much money they spend on their children each month, clothing, food, et cetera. So we take all of all of that into account and then see how much income comes into the household. So that will be from the drawings that the uh, that the coach, the sports coach takes from their business and just make sure that repaying a loan is affordable to them. So mm -hmm. even though a loan would come from from the business, so, you know, it would come, the business would pay a loan in both situations, in a, in a startup loan situation and in a traditional business loan situation. It would be revenue coming into the business that would ultimately pay for the business loan on a monthly basis. It's still down to the individual, ap the individual applicant to make sure that uh, the loan is repaid. So you have yeah. to make sure that it's affordable, you know, to that person on a monthly basis and they're not going to be financially stretched because we don't want to put anyone, you know, in financial jeopardy. That's not that's not the way to move forward. So it has to be it has to be, you know, an an, an easy additional amount for them to pay on a monthly basis for the benefits it provides. Mm -hmm. And just going back on the the grants, is there ever a situation where once a you know a, a grant has been given to a business, is there ever a situation where the that grant can then 
has to then get paid back. Like, for example, you know, you have to put in your your application and things like that. Is there ever a time where, you know, the the, the scheme has to look into the, the, you know, the books or whatever after the grant's been given? So um, I've never I've never heard of a grant in the UK having to be paid back. I've heard about having to pay back grants in other countries, um, but not in the UK. Um, so that's that's just you know, from my from my personal knowledge. So if so, there is an independent accounting review of the way the grant money has been utilised by the project and by the company that it that is performed at the end of the project, um, at project close dates when the project is being completed. So this is done for, for a number of reasons. If there are a number, there are companies that apply for multiple grants, you know, in order to progress them through, um, you know, the, the, the build and delivery stage, you know, of, the, of their business growth cycles. So if, a, if they're applying for a second grant, then the grant issuing authority will rely on the independent accounting review to make sure that the funds were used in accordance with the project plan that was submitted when the grant was applied for. So many of these grants, you know, the larger grants I'm talking about, you have to upload a risk register and a project plan. And it's that project plan that's used as, as the guidance. So, you know, the independent accounting review would look at the milestones in that project plan and see whether or not they were made, you know, during the project duration. And if they were missed, you know, what, what were the reasons why they were missed? There could be very viable reasons why they were missed. But, you know, you do have that, um, you know, that, that that original project plan as your guide, you know, for how the project should have been implemented. And that is verified in the review at the end. Yeah, OK, brilliant. And then I guess just to kind of um, bit of a bit of an overview as well, um, taking a bit of a step back is, I guess that's the beauty of, um, you know, businesses working with you is that you've obviously helped, um, you know, applications for for loans, for grants, and you know, as you said, the buzzwords, um, <laughs> and you know, just having that extra kind of extra support and increasing, you know, the six potentially the success rate. If those who do it by themselves, they may not get that. Um, that, you know, yeah. you know you that's, through, exactly, so. that's exactly the, the the situation i mean i'm i'm helping i'm working with some creatives at the moment uh, apply for a grant granted they're not they're not you know sports coaches they are creatives and um you know all four who i'm working with currently uh, have been over the last couple of days have said that if i hadn't been with them going through the process they would have given up they would have said i can't i can't do this you know, I can't I can't manage the the grant the grants portal that they have to work on. Yeah. Uh, you know, they didn't know the process. It's just all too confusing. They they would have they would have given up. So, so absolutely. So that's my, you know, my mission uh, for my company is to make sure that I, I sort of make that process easier for those that I believe are truly deserving of the grant funding. Yeah, oh, cool. that's fantastic. So, uh, last question, Helen. Uh, when you work with with someone. Has there ever been times where it hasn't been accepted? And if it hasn't, then what's the next step? So with grants or loans or with everything? With everything in general. With everything, yeah. So we have got a really, across the board of all of our funding, we have a 92% success rate. Um, it was 100 for quite a while with the, with the loans. But then with COVID and then with situations cropping up, you know, regarding, you know, people's personal you know credit profiles then that's when um applications started to not be approved the first time most of them we've managed to get approved when they've on a resubmit but not the first time and because you know startup loans it can take two to three months to get the application through mm -hmm. and during that period something could happen you know to you know in the applicant's lifestyle you know they may you know they may be financially stretched and they may miss a few direct debits and you know they may have some something that happens in their bank statements which means that we have to wait a few more months for that to clear before we can continue so yes there are extenuating circumstances i can say that all of the business plans and cash flow forecasts we've produced have been for viable um you know businesses to, to move forward so they they've been accepted but sometimes as i said due to you know the, the, the issues that we've been through over the last few years with lockdown covid etc cetera, etc cetera, sometimes the you know the personal situation um has been affected for applicants which is shame. It has been rough for, for many, many people out there. So, you know, we, we appreciate that. 
grants. So I say to grants, I say with grants, I, I can give you the best possible chance of success. I can put in, we can answer the questions, we can do everything to make it a terrific application. But I can't guarantee that it will be awarded because it's in the, you know, it's the assessors that do the marking. So once we've produced, you know, the, the grant application, it really is in the, you know, in the hands of the assessors as to whether, you know, they will, they will award or not based on what else they see. So because it's a competition and they can only award, you know, to, to a number of successful um, applicants, um, you know, I can't I can't guarantee that, you know, the client will get an award, but they can have, you know, the absolute best chance of getting that award. And often with grant competitions, you are allowed to have two or three or even even four or five, you know, chances at applying for the same grant fund. You know, some of the of the of the funds, I think it's the British Fashion Trust, you know, you can apply up to four times. So, um, you know, you can keep on applying. So, you know, we will polish and, and review and revise, you know, for that client, you know, if they weren't successful in a particular mm -hmm. round and then resubmit for the next. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So where, where where do you see Streamline Consulting in the next five years? Where do you want to be with your business? Yeah, that is one of those, one of those, those questions, isn't it? Should I... Yeah, should I be retired and sitting on the beach, you know, sipping margaritas? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I'd like I'd like Streamline to continue with with the focus that we've had right the way through. You know, is making sure that we support you know those those, those really impressive entrepreneurs um, in getting the funding, the early stage funding that they that they deserve. And we don't want them to be freaked out, you know, by by laborious you know application processes and red tape. So I would like to be helping you know a significant number of of client of um, grant clients we have a retainer model you know so I'd, I'd like to have at least 30 clients who are retained by us on a regular basis on a monthly basis and um, then continue you know to work with the loans the startup loans and also some of the other offerings that we offer which uh, which support you know companies who are bringing innovation into the UK so mm -hmm. so yes a, a rounded you know a rounded company which supports um yeah, entrepreneurs you know with, with funding from a variety of different angles Lovely. Love, love that summary. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you very much, Helen, for coming on and uh, sharing such insightful information with us. Uh, thanks, Andrew, for hopping on as well. Um, so all the best and look forward to, to connecting you, with you again in the near future. Super. Thank you. And, you know, if anyone wants to, to reach out and have a chat, very happy to chat to anybody. Yeah, we'll put all your information below below the video so any coach can reach out to you directly. Yeah, no, no obligation, just, just a chat I'm happy to give. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. Thank you very Thanks, much. Ellen. Thank you. Thanks.